Well, there's plenty more to get out in the ground now. The worst of that storm's gone and we've got a bright day today. Not much rain, that's the main thing. Well, these are gonna go out today and I can hear you saying, surely not more onions, but these are the Zebrun shallots that I started off growing indoors and they're a bit of a disaster. And eventually I brought a few outside and I sowed some directly in the polytunnel and this is what I got. So these are probably the healthiest Zebrun shallots I've grown. And I'm gonna get those in next to the turnips where I had half a bed spare. And then I've got a few things to clear out. I'm trying to get to the point where at least I can put the seedlings that are left on top of the bench and that'll give me a clear bed underneath and I can start to sow and plant some of those lettuce. There's tons of lettuce in my body tunnel and I'd like to get some at least into that bed. So I'll put this down and I'll start moving things around so that I know what I've got to work on. One thing I am going to do today is put that gooseberry bush branch that broke off in the storm into a pot. That was a great suggestion I got on the channel, so thank you. Right, well, let's have a look what we've got here. So over the back there, we've got the dahlia that we took out of the main flower bed and wintered in the polytunnel. So that's really shooting now, needs to go in. This is all abelia that I've grown and that's going over to the house to go into hanging baskets. I've got some soil blocks here with sunflowers in and those plants are pretty much ready to go somewhere now. That celeriac will go back. Over here I've got the dwarf cosmos which came to nothing. I've got some dahlias which I sowed at the same time as Monty Don, that's Figaro mix, and I got three out of that, which is fine. And the dwarf mix I did at the same time, one, two, three, four, looks like five. I don't want tons of dahlias, so I'm quite pleased with that. This is the cosmos I sowed from last year's seed. Didn't get too much up, two, four, six, but they need to go out. This is a dahlia that I bought mail order, which is doing really well. The other one, not so much. I got a tray of mesembryanthemums, which was given to me by my neighbor. I think they'll be going in the flower bed when Mrs. K gets underway. These are really interesting because this is the polyanthus or primulas that I grew. And they're a long-term project, but I've got Oh, a good six seedlings in there and a couple in here. And these look like I ought to be transplanting them now. And these maybe not quite so soon, but that's good. This is the dwarf tomato called House. They're looking fantastic. I just think they need to go into a bigger pot now. And this is the ranunculus. And a number of you have been asking what's happened with ranunculus. And the truth is, I think it's about 60% success rate. A lot of these just came to nothing and there's some that have done really well. So this is the white ones. This is the pink ones and this is a mix. So only two of those worked out and I don't know whether they got too dry, too cold or what really, but I am hearing that they can be quite hard to grow. So. I'm quite pleased with what I've got, but they need to come out now and be put into their final destinations. I've got a couple of herbs there. This is a sage, which is starting to shoot. So I don't know whether to put him back in the polytunnel for a bit longer, but I think he needs better soil. That's a rosemary, which I took from a cutting. And this is a whole bunch of onions and they are Bedfordshire champion, so I really haven't got a great deal of need for more of those. And then in the polytunnel, I'm starting to get to the point where I can lift things. The idea is that these lettuce will go down then. Um, so 
This is the extra beans I sowed. They can lift up. My parsnips are coming through quite nicely, so I can lift those up. Some beetroot to go into here, so hopefully I can use those. That's the swede, just one germination so far there, but they can go up on the bench. This is basil. These two pots have done really well, and those not so much. I've got quite a few in that back one, but not many in this one. So I'll probably end up transplanting the few plants into that one when they get big enough to handle. Um, lots of leeks, which are just a little way off yet before I put those in. Um, so they can all come up. Quite a few spare onions, which I think I'm going to end up giving away. Um, my runner beans, of which I've had a few, one more germination, but that's why I ended up sowing the balance of what I had of seed. Two lettuce box, one of these can go over the house now, and then there's a mixed bunch of squash and runner beans there, which I think they can go up on top of the bench. So the idea is I can pretty much clear and lift things up to here, the lettuce comes down, I've got a free bed then to start all the growing in that bed. So I think next is to work through this bunch and see if I can get some things either potted on or into their final destinations. Right, I'm going to pot up these dwarf tomatoes called house. And I've been really surprised how well they've come on. They're fantastic little bushy plants and they've already got flowers on them. I'm gonna put them into a fairly small pot. I don't think they're ever gonna need a massive pot. And hopefully, if they get really mature, if I need to, I can pot them on a bit more. So we've got four there. Let's get four of these pots done. I'll tell you what was interesting. I asked everybody in my last video what their worst jobs were on the allotment. And I got a real mix, but there seemed to be some common threads. People didn't like cutting grass much. And well, I sort of go along with that. And at the moment it's a bit frustrating because it's too wet to cut, but it needs cutting. People didn't like weeding, for sure. That was one that I'm not particularly fond of. And then somebody said watering continuously in the summer. And yeah, I really relate to that too. And a few people thought the same because it can become a real bind, especially if you've got a big plot and it's really warm. And I know a few of our viewers overseas have got some really hot weather at the moment. So we think we've got some challenges They've got the opposite challenge. Uh, so I guess as gardeners, we've always got some sort of challenge. And it reminded me when people were coming up with their things that they don't like doing so much, that one that really gets me down is every night covering the plants because it's likely to be a frost. And that went on for weeks and weeks this year. But there we are, that's all part of gardening. Right, I'm gonna get these little plants in, they are particularly nice. Let's see what the root system's like. Yeah, pretty good. So get that in, give it a bit of a firm down, and then we'll get those watered. And hopefully they'll continue to progress as well as they've done so far. Now I'm thinking that these will live up on the bench with the peppers which I haven't shown you for a while, but they've come out of the propagator and they're now sort of acclimatizing in the house in a cooler room and they're doing really well. So hopefully I'll be able to bring those out into the polytunnel in the not too distant future. I need some more consistent warm weather really. All right, let's get this last one out. There we go. We'll give those a watering in in a minute along with other plants that I'm pulling out. So I'll pop those into this tray. This is the done tray. And we'll move on. 
so these sinks I prepared quite a bit earlier on in the season and I just covered them with this mesh to keep the cats off and I'm just going to weed it quickly it shouldn't take too long and I'm going to put into here one of the dahlias that I've grown from a corn I've got a dandelion in there and it's really difficult to get out but I keep on top of it and then I'm going to take this off which was for the same purpose and give that a bit of weed. Now these tulips have done everything they're gonna do now. I'm gonna let them just die down a little bit further whilst the other plants are establishing. But I've got a dahlia at the back here, which is coming through nicely. And I'm gonna add into these two Belfast sinks, a few other plants. Now, what I'm thinking is one of these dahlias, I think this fella, which is called Dahlia Franz Kapka. So that one's gonna go into here. Um, and next to this dahlia, I think we're gonna have a few of the ranunculus. So let's see if I can dig this fella out and get cracking with that there's a lot of soil in here I'll we'll just move it for now now this isn't particularly deep I'm wondering whether it's going to be deep enough for this I'm thinking not so perhaps this bed will just be ranunculus and this is the mixed varieties so we're going to get those out and just pop them in. I think we'll put six in here and hopefully that'll give us a nice show. Right, a few more. So out of that tray of three, six, nine, twelve, we only had two successful, which is a bit disappointing on the mixed, uh, but we have got much more of the pink and the white. So let's take these, and this is the pink. They're nicely rooted. I do like ranun ranunculus. I've never grown them before, so it's been quite a learning curve. But if we get this many plants out of it, I'll be reasonably happy. That one's a little bit more forlorn, but there we are. So get some of that compost back in that I moved. And we'll see how these fare. And I'm gonna put this back over, but this time just as an arch, just to keep the cats off. And then I think we'll put that dahlia into this one, which is that much deeper. So let's get down in there. So two dahlias and the tulips looking a bit forlorn at the front and what I'll do is eventually I'll clip those and replace them with something a bit more colourful. Right, that's those done. I've got this rather nice old woodworker's box which I've always used for planting into it gonna rot eventually but it's given me plenty of years of service so far. I've just taken out some herbs that have really seen better days but there was a nice parsley in there so I'm going to put that into my herb bed. In the meantime I'm going to fill this and have it dedicated to a whole bunch of these ranunculus and this is the white ones that are left so that should look pretty nice I think and I'll leave that up here on the patio and we'll see how they fare in this sort of box. I'm hoping that they'll be all right. Let's get it quite nicely full. And I think we could probably get 
four, maybe even five in here. So let's see what we've got. Uh, we'll put some nice healthy ones in. Actually, some of these have got two corms together, so we're going to have a fairly dense show of this flower in here. And then one nice big one at the end. There we are. So, fingers crossed, that will look very nice when it's starting to bloom. And we'll drop that to the back here for a minute. There we go. Okay, so on to these two herbs down here. So a lot of people suggested that in my herb bed, rather than put the rosemary straight into the ground and then struggle to lift it, that I actually put it in a decent sized pot and put the pot into the bed. So I'm gonna give that a go. I think that's a great idea. And this here sage, which is looking a little bit weak, but is starting to shoot. I think I'm gonna put that in my herb bed as well. So it's just whether I wanna put it in a pot first. I think I will because it looks like it could do with a little bit more growth before I plant it out. So we'll get that one in and we'll get this one in. Let's get some compost. So if this is gonna go into the ground, I don't need to put crocs in the bottom, I don't think. Let's get my plant out. Nice roots on that as well. Put him about there. and then just fill around in. So the reason I want to take the rosemary out as we get to the back end of the year is that it just doesn't survive in our cold temperatures through the winter months unless it's really well sheltered. So hopefully I can pull it out really easily from this and then put it back in the polytunnel for the winter. We've got one dead bit there, which we'll take off. So that one's heading for the herb bed in a pot. And then give this a little bit more growth with some decent compost before I transplant it into the herb bed later. And it'll probably be in here for just a few weeks. And that one seems to be in a bad way. I'm gonna take the top out of it and see if we can encourage all that younger growth to come on. Right, that goes in the pot for watering and we're on our way. So we're gonna get these in with their pots. I need to find an area that I can get in that's reasonably deep without hitting all the branches of the Hugel culture bed, which is gonna be a bit challenging. I think we've got a bit of space coming here. There we are. Uh, so we'll put this one in there. It's gonna have to be deeper than that. I'm gonna need to get a tool. <sighs> right, let's see if I can find a decent spot. To be honest, it's all pretty shallow, which maybe in here. No, nope, to be honest, I don't think that's going to work for me. I just don't think I'm going to get able to get down deep enough. So I think we'll keep that one to one side, but we will put in this parsley. And the parsley does get quite tall as well once it gets going. So I'm going to pop that in there, tuck its roots in. And this came out of that wooden box that I've used for the ranunculus. So it'll enjoy having its roots roaming free. And let me see if I can get down to this rosemary. Deep enough to get the pot in here. I only put this in a few days ago, so I'm not really disturbing the roots that much. Now it looks a bit more successful here, yeah. So let's get it into there.
Right. Yeah, that's perfect. Now I'll cover the pot over for aesthetic reasons. And there we are. That should do fairly well in there and be able to be pulled out when I need to. As I was walking past here, I thought I could show you this rosemary. Now this has stayed in all winter and you can see what happens. We've got new growth on it, but it really takes a battering and gets quite woody versus something like that. So I think taking them in each year is probably the best thing and hopefully they'll succeed. Well, I've been digging around my troughs and pots to see what I've got. And I've got a mix here and we'll see what's suitable for any of these other plants that I've got. Now the sunflowers that I've sown, called teddy bear, they're actually quite low growing, about that I think. So I'm wondering whether I could do a trough full of those. So I'll perhaps give that a go. And then the dahlias, I think I could put a few in a pot like that, maybe a pot like that. And then I've got these two other troughs, which may come to use. So I'll fill a couple of these up and see what options I've got. Well, I was sorely tempted to prick these out and pot these up, these primulas. But to be honest with you, they require a gritty compost. And I haven't got gravel or grit over here. So I'm going to take those back to the house and we'll pop those on into a fairly small pot. In the meantime, the other ones that are not really developed very much can go back in the cold frame. What I am going to do is pot up these last two sunflowers because I'm going to give them away. So just a little bit of compost into those. Oh, we're not going to be short of onions or shallots this year, that's for sure. So this is the brunt and it's been grown in these really tough root trainers. And the idea is that you can push them out and that's exactly what happens. They're perfect for that. And they're really coming out of there brilliantly. I think once a plant gets a reasonably good root on it, they pop out of these root trainers really easy. So Zebruna, one of those that some people struggle with, and I have as well in the past, but we're certainly mastering it in these set of Zebruna that I've sewn direct into the polytunnel. Right, well, we'll pop these out and we'll space them about six inches apart. All I want to do is make sure that I can hoe between them and get the weeds out because the onion families really don't like any weed around them at all. All right, see how far they go. And then we'll do some more if we need to. So quite simply, I need to get clear of this end of the net because it tends to impact on the plants. Drop them in and push them down. They're really very straightforward to plant. And the other onions that got bashed by the storm this week or weekend seem to be coming back without too much problem. So that's good news. They were strong plants and they do survive a little bit of bad news. Right, let's get that in there. Okay, well, I'll carry on planting these and bring you back when we finished. Well, they went in absolutely perfectly, just about the right number for the space that was left. So we'll get this net down and hopefully they will continue to grow as well as they have done already, which has been marvelous. Right, get the edges clamped. What they did also do, while well, I had the compost out, was get that bit of gooseberry branch potted up. So we'll put that in the nursery down in the compost area 
and see if it'll root. Good times. Well, anybody who watches my channel regularly will know that I do struggle to half do a job. So I just couldn't walk away from this until I'd given it a good tidy up. I get those plants that I've just potted on watered and make sure that everything is in good order before I move on to the next. So, these capillary mats under all these seedlings work really well. They make a really big difference and just so as you're worrying about them drying out, give these lettuce a bit of a water. They'll be going in soon. And the beetroot. My leeks are looking very healthy indeed. I'm really pleased with them. It won't be long before I'm doing the routine where I soak them in a load of water and just separate them before I plant them. Works really well. And I'm gonna give the carrots a bit of a water and they're coming on nicely. Anybody who watches my channel regularly will also know that I keep any spare plants over and above my needs in the cold frame during the summer months just in case anything goes wildly wrong but this year I set out not to grow much more than I really needed and I'm quite pleased to be able to show you what's sitting in my spares right now which isn't an awful lot let's take a look right here we go so as you can see it's nearly all onions and if you're wondering why I've got so many onions, just go back and watch my video, I panicked, and you'll get a reasonable idea of what went wrong. Other than that, there's a few kale, and that's it. So does that leave me a bit exposed? Well, I suppose so. I think I've probably lost a couple of broccoli here, but I could pop a couple of kale in there. These beds are celeriac and swede, so they're not a problem. Everything else here is full. I've got leeks that'll be going in there shortly. And those leeks that I planted in the late summer, I'll be taking those out and eating those soon. I've got a bit of a gap here where I think one of the broad beans didn't come up, but this morning I see there is one, so I think it's that one that hasn't come up. Bit of weeding to do in here. Otherwise this is all full. The runner beans of course are still to go in and I will have spares of those based on the fact that I had to sow a load more because I'm worried about germination. But that's not a problem. The broccoli will come out and the parsnips will go in there. This bed is waiting for the courgettes and of course the squash and pumpkins will be going up there. So the only bed that's really looking for planting right now is the front end of this, which has got a few extra broad beans in it. And I'm sure I'll be able to put some swede or celeriac or something in there. So I've sort of got it right this year, which is, well, surprising really, but good at the same time. Okay, well, I think that's me done for today. What I will be getting on to very shortly is taking care of these beds below the trees. This one's got Sweet Williams in, and I'll probably end up putting the few Cosmos that I've got in there. The wallflowers are fine at the moment, but they will come out, so I need to think about that. And then I did have poppies in there. I can see a few germinating. My calendula go in the front and I've got a lot of seed to put in. And we haven't had much germination from last year. It's a little bit, but there's quite a bit of weeding to do in these. And this one has not got anything that I've planned for it yet. So I don't know. Again, I've got plenty of seed. So I've got to get all these mares tail out when I attack this and then clear it out I'll break the surface and then sow some seed. The soil is now warm enough, I think, to sow direct. So 
that'll be a job for the near future. I did notice after the storm that this gooseberry is leaning over too much. So I, I do want to stake him and get him stood up again. So that's me for today. Feels like the storm's behind me now and we're getting on with planting and it'll nearly be complete apart from the warmer crops. Take care. I do hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, click the subscribe button, click the like button. And if you want updates from me each time I upload a video, click the bell and select all. I do hope you have a great day. Diochen Bar.